Welcome to day three of the Dubai Air Show. And what a great program we've got for you today. We're looking at fighter aircraft, we're looking at the inside and the design plans of one of the head of state aircraft for the region, and we're going to be talking to the boss of one of the fastest growing regional airlines. There's been a lot of great things to see at the show this week, a lot of beautiful things, and hey, don't you just love television? Hello, and here are the news headlines from day three of the Dubai Air Show. I'm Steve Nichols. Following what Airbus described as a day of very tough negotiations, Qatar Airways placed a mega order with Airbus for 50 A320neos and 5 A380s in a deal valued at more than $6 billion. Earlier during the day, it had looked like the deal was off when Qatar CEO Akbar al Bakr cancelled the press conference claiming the deal had reached an impasse. Fly Dubai didn't place any orders today but says it is eyeing Boeing 737 MAX and the Airbus A320neo aircraft for purchases it might make in a year's time. The world's fastest growing startup airline showed it was still investing heavily and signed two new fleet MRO contracts with Abu Dhabi Adat, part of the Mubadla Aerospace MRO network with a combined value of $54 million. Kuwait's Alafco, aviation lease and finance company, has selected Pratt & Whitney Pure Power engines to power its order of 50 firm Airbus A320neo family aircraft, and deliveries are scheduled to start in 2017. The benefits of the Pure Power engine include double-digit reductions in fuel burn, environmental emissions, engine noise and operating costs. And finally, Emirates has selected Rockwell Collins Avionics for 32 of its new Airbus A380 and 30 Boeing 777 aircraft. The value of the deal is not known, but it includes the Rockwell Collins multi-scan threat detection system and its multi-mode receiver. And now, over to Alan. I'm joined in the studio now by Gaithel Gaith, the head of the fastest ever growing startup airline, Fly Dubai. Gaith, welcome to the programme. <laughs> welcome, yes. Yeah. It's been a very, very exciting uh, journey, I should think, for you, isn't it, over the last couple of years? You came from nothing, and tell us where we are now. How many aircraft do we have? Well, um, we, are, we came out of something that's significant, of course, operating out of uh, the United Arab Emirates. Airline has always been very successful. Uh, yes, we started with nothing. Uh, three years ago there was no fly Dubai, no aircraft, now we have 20 aircraft and 49 destinations. That's quite something. Now then, today um, at the show you've signed a deal with uh, maintenance with ADAT. That's, that's great keeping this within the United Arab Emirates. Oh, I am personally, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, very proud that in Fly Dubai we've been able to work with ADAT. Even though you know we had to go through an RFB, my personal choice was always to go with that because of the fact that they are a UAE company. We are very proud of what they have done for the United Arab Emirates, especially Mubadala, investing in a variety of projects that are good for the industry, but it's also good for the country. To be able to contribute as Fly Dubai to that has been an honor for us. Fantastic. We expect you at the show to see lots of orders and of course your, your old friends at uh, Emirates didn't let you down <laughs> earlier in the week. Um, nothing though really from Fly Dubai. Oh, there was expectation maybe you'd be starting to talk about the 737 MAX. What's happening in orders? Well, of course we, we in Fly Dubai, uh, we made the largest order for ever for a startup airline, which is a 50 aircraft only three years ago. So we are very proud of that uh, and we have 30 more aircraft to receive uh, in the future. But rightly so, because of the development of the MAX and the NEO and to stay true to what we have committed to our customer to always give them the lowest cost possible, Fly Dubai is seriously considering uh, purchasing one of these two type of aircraft. We are now in the first phase of studying these two aircraft and hope that we can make an order within the next 12 months from now. So after these orders, we're looking forward five years time, what will we see from Fly Dubai? Well, at least more than 50 aircraft for sure. Uh, I, I hope uh, that we can make this airline more successful and covering uh, as many uh, cities within the radius of uh, five hours from the United Arab Emirates successfully with uh, more, less uh, stress and uh, less cost. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very, thank very, you very much. much. Thank you. Well, anybody who's been watching this program during the week 
will know that we've been regularly disturbed by the loud sound of fighter aircraft above our heads. Well, this is the time for me to get my own back and make a little bit of noise for myself. I'm going to talk to Air Commodore Khalid Mahmoud, and this is where the thunder really starts. So far, we have uh, produced about 36 of these aeroplanes. We have uh, raised two squadrons of these uh, aircraft, these wonderful aircraft, and the third squadron is under raising. Basically, we designed it to meet our requirements, which are actually to uh, face the challenges of today and tomorrow's uh, combat arenas, high threat arenas. The aircraft is good enough for air combat with its uh, long range uh, radar guided missiles. The aircraft is actually equipped for performing all kinds of combat roles. The special things about the aircraft are its aerodynamics. It's, uh, if you see, its intake is uh, highly efficient. It's, and similarly, the wing contours, if you follow, they are following the modern concepts. And that's why you see in the air show, the aircraft gives strikes, uh, condensation of air behind it when it's turning hard. All the system in the aircraft are integrated, all integrated. So it has got an excellent man-machine interface. The pilot is very comfortable, very, feels very homely, and can deploy all the weapons and uh, avionics uh, very comfortably. And another feature which I didn't mention to you is that it's a very attractive cost. It's almost at a one third the cost of other uh, aeroplanes which are available in the market to our any customer. We know the capabilities of the plane. We demonstrated here. We demonstrated in the fire part demonstration. We also went to Zuhai Air Show in China. We went to Farm Air Show. We went to the Turkish Air Show because we know that the aircraft has got the potential. The, you know, the aircraft stands very prominent in sort class of fighters. It's our last day at the show, but we've managed to catch up with a few more exhibitors in the halls. First, Liz Mosscrop speaks with Lufthansa Technik. Lufthansa Technik has announced today that they've taken on another 7478. Here at the Dubai Air Show, they're demonstrating a 7878 designed in conjunction with British designer Andrew Winch. This room is actually a bedroom and is uh, um, created like a cinema with a big TV screen and you have swivel seats which you can also use uh, making a seating group uh, for sitting together, dining and whining. This is a 7878 and it's from nose to tail. It is a VIP aircraft, it has no room for entourage. So usually the VIPs have in the front the VIP area and the rear the entourage. This is just to show the capabilities of Lufthansa Technik what we can do in such an aircraft. We have a different elements of lighting. We have in the entrance area a lighting, we have a lighting here. This is giving a different mood light in the aircraft, so you can illuminate the entrance in a different way and also this little bar. And I'll be looking into the safe world of Winslow Company. Uh, we have about 94% of the corporate jet market. We're also uh, in the helicopter market as far as floats and uh, life rafts for that. Uh, we are going to the commercial market. We've been in development for about a year and a half on, a, uh, on commercial products using a different technology. It's actually heat welding um, and uh, polyurethane uh, material, uh, make it more lightweight and they can pack smaller. It's all about the size and weight in the commercial market. Uh, one of the features that sets us apart is our auto erect canopy. Um, it, when you inflate this life raft, it's going to look just like this, ready to climb into. All you got to do is zip it closed. Another very important feature is our 406 megahertz ELT. It's a triple frequency ELT. It sends a signal to the satellites, and it reduces the search uh, pattern of the search grid from 500 nautical miles to about uh, three kilometers. And depending on what kind of regulation you're flying under, FAR Part 135, Part 91, you'll have a, a, a certified kit um, with the required equipment to keep the passengers as comfortable and safe until rescue. All the stands at the show are looking for that extra pulling power. I'm with American company Electro, who definitely has it. This model is our Electro AP8850 SDA. It has 120,000 pound capacity. And this particular model is our most popular, really FBO type model, just because it has such a broad variety of aircraft that it can handle. Really anything from the Lear's, Citations, King Air's, all the way up to a fully loaded Embraer. It sets Electro pretty much universally apart from a typical conventional tug and tow bar um, tow system is the fact that it's tow barless. You're completely eliminating that link between the aircraft and the tow vehicle, and instead the, the aircraft is, is directly tied or directly sitting on the front part of the tow tractor. So now the weight of the aircraft is working in your advantage, increasing your traction rather than it being a, a game of tug versus aircraft. 
And talking of pulling, well, welcome back. I tell you, it's been a great week here at the Dubai Air Show. We've seen a lot of fabulous things and we hope you've enjoyed being with us. We're going to be back in two weeks' time reporting from the ARCO conference in Abu Dhabi. But until then, cheers.